Hello and welcome. You're watching Krishi Jagran Business, India's leading platform that keeps you updated with all the major agri news of the day. Let's have a look at the headlines first. Agri Ministries tableau capture India's International Air of Millet Initiative at Republic Day Parade. Tableau of Tribal Ministry Affairs showcases quality education in Eklavya model schools. Prime Minister shares glimpses from Republic Day program at Kartavya Path. PM Modi thanks world leaders for their greetings on India's 74th Republic Day. Final stage of Union Budget 2023 commences with halwa ceremony today. Center announces Padma Awards list Mulayam Singh Yadav and Zakir Hussain among 106 recipients. Greater Noida CEO asks officials to expedite process of providing residential plots to farmers. Farmer Union stage mega rally in Jeend to protest in Delhi in March demanding guarantee for MSP. Stir to intensify in Haryana as farmers reject government's rupees 10 SAP hike. Pashchim Odisha Krishi Mela commences in Sambalpur today. EOI to be invited for the international transshipment port at Great Nicobar Island. Aadhaar EKYC transactions jump 18.53% to 84.8 crores in third quarter of financial year 2022-23. Overcast skies in Delhi, IMD predicts thunderstorm over parts of Uttar Pradesh and Haryana. Now the news in detail. In a year that has been declared the International Year of Millets by the United Nations, the Tableau of Indian Council for Agriculture Research on Republic Day depicted the flourishing crops of Jawar, Bajra, Ragi, Kutki and Sanwa. It brought out the happiness and the efforts of farmers to provide society with nutritious and healthy millet crops. The tractor in front of the tableau was decorated with a rangoli of millet grains to represent a combination of traditional farming and modernity. An array of new nutritional millet products fit for daily consumption was also showcased. India is a global leader in the production of millet crops in 21 states and shares more than 15% of the world's total production. The Indian Institute of Millets Research has also succeeded in developing many bio-fortified varieties and products for the benefit of the farmer. Now promoted as superfood, Farmers are anticipated to benefit by getting good profit from the cultivation of millet crops. In line with the vision of celebrating our glorious tribal heritage, a tableau of the Ministry of Tribal Affairs showcasing tribal welfare through quality education in Eklavya model residential schools established for ST children across the country, featured at the National Republic Day. 23 tablets, 17 from states and union territories and 6 from various ministries and departments depicting the nation's rich cultural heritage, economic progress and strong internal and external security rolled down the Kartavipat. The front portion of the tableau showcased the emphasis of Ministry of Nari Shakti, symbolic of girl education, ensuring equal enrollment of tribal boys and girls at EMRS. It also emphasized the desire of the tribal students to conquer the world through education. An archetypical pen, illustrative of learning in the shape of Eklavya's bow and arrow, reflects the single-eyed mission with which the tribal students of EMRS shape their future and realize their dreams. Sharing the glimpses from today's Republic Day program at Kartavipath in Delhi, the Prime Minister Narendra Modi shared a series of tweets. India celebrated its 74th Republic Day at the newly revamped Kartavipath on Thursday. As part of the Republic Day parade, up to 23 tablocks, including 17 from states and union territories, with six from different departments and ministries rolled down the Kartavipath on January 26. Showcasing a variety of Indian traditions and energizing the street with music and dance. Only made in India weapons were on display at the parade this year. The indigenous 105mm Indian field guns offered the 21-gun salute to the President Draupadi Murmu. As the show came to a close, 
Prime Minister Modi greeted the crowd amid cheers after bidding adieu to President Murmu and her counterpart, Abdel Fateh al-Sisi, the Egyptian president, who was also the chief guest at the event. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has thanked the world leader for their greetings on India's 74th Republic Day. In response to a tweet by Prime Minister of Australia, PM Modi said, Thank you, Prime Minister. Greetings to you and the friendly people of Australia on Australia Day. Responding to Prime Minister of Bhutan, PM Modi wrote, Thank you, Dr. Lote Shering, for your warm wishes. India is committed to its unique partnership with Bhutan for progress and prosperity of both our nations. In response to a tweet by the President of Maldives, PM said, Thank you for your warm greetings, President. Glad to see the sustained progress achieved by India and Maldives' partnership, underpinned by common democratic values. Meanwhile, in response to the President of France, PM said, Grateful for your warm greetings, my dear friend Emmanuel Macron, on India's Republic Day. I share your commitment to work together for success of India's G20 presidency and 25th anniversary of India-France strategic partnership. India and France together are a force for global good. The halwa ceremony, marking the final stage of the budget preparation process for Union Budget 2023-2024, was held in the North Block today afternoon in the presence of Union Finance and Corporate Affairs Minister Nirmala Sita Raman and Union Ministers of State for Finance Bankar Chaudhary and Dr. Bhagwan Karat. A customary halwa ceremony is performed every year before the lock-in process of budget preparation begins. Like the previous two union budgets, Budget 2023 will also be delivered in paperless form. The budget is to be presented on 1st February 2023. President Draupadi Murmu on Wednesday approved conformant of 106 Padma Awards. The list comprises 6 Padma Vibhushan, 9 Padma Bhushan and 91 Padma Shri awardees. It is worth mentioning that 19 of the awardees are women and the list also includes two persons from the category of foreigners, NRI, PIO, OCI and seven posthumous awardees. Patayat Sahu from Odisha will receive the award in agriculture. The awards are given in various disciplines or fields including art, social work, public affairs, science, engineering, trade, industry, medicine, literature, education, sports, civil service, etc. The President of India confers the award at ceremonial functions held at Rashtrapati Bhavan in March or April every year. For 2023, the President has approved 106 Padma Awards, including three duo cases. Greater Noida Industrial Development Authority CEO Ritu Maheshwari directed the officials to expedite the process of providing 6% residential plots to the farmers who gave up their land for the development of the industrial area on Wednesday. Maheshwari also ordered the removal of encroachment from the land meant for farmers with the help of police officials. During a review meeting on Wednesday, Maheshwari reprimanded the officials concerned for slow paddling on the lease deed. She also warned of a strict departmental action against the negligent of officers. After the eligibility is decided by the land records, the planning department approves the plot. The project department develops it and issues the lease plan and then the lease deed is handed over to the farmers. Nearly one year after withdrawing their agitation against the three central farm laws, which now stand repealed, thousands of farmers participated in a massive rally organized in Haryana's Jean town on Thursday, raising key demands that are still unfulfilled. The rally was organized on the call of Samyukt Kisan Morcha, the umbrella body of farmer unions, which spearheaded the agitation against the farm laws. During the rally attended by farmers mainly from Punjab, Haryana, Uttar Pradesh, the SKM leaders announced to hold a march to parliament on a day between March 15 to 22 during the budget session. The exact date of the parliament march will be decided in a meeting to be held in Kurukshetra on February 9. After farmers stopped crushing operations at sugar mills and intensified their stir, 
demanding hike in state advised price the haryana government on wednesday announced rupees 10 per quintal hike in sugarcane price increasing the current price of rupees 372 per quintal the farmers were demanding that the sap be hiked to rupees 450 per quintal to compensate the losses due to poor yield in high input cost following a pest attack on the crop the last time the state government had hiked the sugarcane price by 12 rupees per quintal in september 2020 and the farmers were being paid rupees 362 per quintal in punjab the cultivators of sugarcane were paid rupees 380 per quintal 8 rupees more than what farmers of haryana will be getting after the latest hike in the sap Pashchim Odisha Krishi Mela 2023 is being organized in Sambalpur from today onwards. The fair has started from today and will continue till 31st of January. This fair is organized to showcase business opportunities in Odisha leading farmers beneficial for agriculture being done. Working towards the island development program announced by the government, the Ministry of Ports, Shipping and Waterways as a part of holistic development of Great Nicobar Island is working towards development of Mega International Container Transshipment Port. Other projects include airport township and power plant. Holistic development of island aims to bridge the gaps in infrastructure and improve economic opportunity for rapid increase in size of all types of vessels from feeders to the large intercontinental carriers. Further, the proposed infrastructure facilities such as service level and facilities match with that the global top container shipment terminals and neighboring ports. The project focuses on three key drivers which can result in making it a leading container transshipment port, that is, a strategic location in terms of proximity, with international shipping trade toot, availability of natural water depth of over 20 meter, and carrying capacity of transshipment cargo from all the ports in the proximity, including Indian ports. Adoption of Aadhaar-based eKYC is witnessing a continuous progress and in the October-December quarter third of financial year 2022, more than 84.8 crore eKYC transactions were executed using Aadhaar, a growth of 18.53% over the second quarter of the current financial year. In December alone, 32.49 crore eKYC transactions were carried out using Aadhaar, over 13% more than the previous month. Aadhaar eKYC service is increasingly playing an important role in banking and non-banking financial services by providing transparent and improved customer experience and helping in ease of doing business. In October, the number of Aadhaar eKYC transactions were 23.56 crore and in November, this number went up to 28.75 crore before jumping further in December, indicating its growth, usage and utility in the economy. Delhi has experienced overcast weather with moderate fog reducing visibility to 200 meters. According to the India Meteorological Department, the maximum and minimum temperatures are expected to remain at 9 degrees Celsius and 19 degrees Celsius respectively. The next 4 to 5 days are likely to be cloudy in Delhi. On January 29, Light rain may be expected as a result of a recent western disturbance. Delhi has not yet experienced any rain this winter, while in January of this year, the capital experienced eight cold wave days, the most in the month of past 15 years. According to IMD data, the city experienced two severe cold wave spills, January 5 to 9, and January 16 to 18. Additionally, the national capital has experienced most dense fog in the month, over 50 hours since 2019. Well, that is all for today's news. This is Ayushi signing off.